Y'all ready to be history? It's started. Welcome. Hi. 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 Hello, everyone. To the Pro Audio Suite. These guys are professional. They're motivated. Thanks to Tribooth, the best vocal booth for home or on the road voice recording. And Austrian Audio, making passion heard. Introducing Robert Marshall from Source Elements and Someone Audio Post, Chicago. Darren Robert Robertson from Voodoo Radio Imaging, Sydney. Tech to the VO Stars, George the Tech Whitam from LA. And me, Andrew Peters, voiceover talent and home studio guy. Line up, lady! Here we go. And welcome to another Pro Audio Suite. Thanks to Tribooth. Don't forget the code TRIPAP200. That will get you 200 US dollars off your Tribooth. And Austrian Audio, making passion heard. Now, speaking of Austrian Audio, don't forget the headphone competition. It ends now at the end of the month because we realized two weeks wasn't enough. It's all about doing a mix with the stems that uh, we have in the show notes. So go to the show notes or to the website to enter. Simple as that, and up for grabs is a pair of the brand new Austrian Audio hi 20s. They're brand new. You'll be one of the first on the planet to have a pair of these headphones. Now, onto the topic for today's podcast. Yes, it's the old AI bandwagon. Um, so, that, you know, we all know there's a good side and there's a bad side to AI. Uh, the good side is the way James Earl Jones signed over his or licensed his um, voice to. Uh, mm-hmm. Disney, uh, so his pe- his family or the trust or whatever get paid every time they use it. What a legacy, it, though, too. Is, Imagine that for you know for generations to come, yeah. your voice will still be heard. You know that's amazing, yeah. isn't it? When you think about that, it's kind of weird, actually. I'm not sure about that. But anyway, but on the flip side, and this was something that popped up. I saw a couple of weeks ago. There's a guy called Paul Sky Learman and Linia Sage. Uh, they were listening to a podcast about AI, and it was an interview with an AI-powered chatbot with text-to-speech. The AI had Paul Sky Learman's voice. So when they got home to their apartment, they started finding out where this was all coming from. They traced it, and then they found her voice Busted. as well. So you can gather there is a lawsuit going on as we speak, and I think the company's. Well, I won't do the company name in case we get sued. Haven't we covered this? Isn't it? Is that? Isn't that not stolen? Isn't stolen what? Stolen something? There's something that's not protected. Isn't that? Isn't that what we understand? Well, I don't know about if this? there's a I, we. If there's not permission to use it, I'm guessing it's like using an image, isn't it? Well, that, that when we had that lawyer guy on not all that long ago, that wasn't the case. We don't own our voice. That we remember we had the Australian lawyer on not all that long, well, a couple of years ago now, and he was going, well, we actually don't own our voices. Well, yeah. he's wrong. Yeah, but I, so what, what, what's the deal, Robert? What do you think? I think that all, I won't name them, I guess, but the AI companies that are letting any Yahoo in the world just upload whatever audio they want of someone's voice that they don't own and it's not their voice and upload it into someone's server so it can be put into the soup of synthesized voices and used as in basically intellectual property. I think it's horrible. I I think that if you should absolutely own the rights to whatever you upload into some AI engine, and the fact that these companies are basically going like it's some porn website. Sure, I'm 18. Sure, I have permission <laughs> yeah. to upload this voice. They're just enabling fucking theft. Mm. And I think yeah. it's yeah. bullshit. And you can edit out all those swear words. <laughs> not on this show. You're when not. do I ever edit them out, Robert? Let's be honest. <laughs> well, yeah, this is this is a deplorable. And there, there's an article in a... A website called futurism.com talking about the fact that James gave up the rights to that voice a few days before well, his, he sold them. Yeah. He well, sold before them. a few that days before right. he passed, he it was finalized. He finalized the deal. It was initially duplicated by um, Respeacher, which is a company based in Kiev. And, um, you know, when these guys have been literally at war, they've been in their, you know, bunkers. Writing software. Um, well, you know what else, what other software these guys are writing in their bunkers? Uh, source elements, I'm guessing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm. there's a lot of very smart and people that don't have a lot of other good things to be doing right now uh, in Ukraine um, coding. So, but then it also turns out that another voice from the same film from Star Wars, um, his voice got used, and 22 years after his death. 
Um, the character was Grand Moff Tarkin. Yeah, Governor Tarkin. He was the guy who, uh, in the original Star Wars, who blows up the Tatooine. Yeah, the claim is that Cushing told him prior to his death in 1994 that nobody was to digitally recreate his likeness without his express permission. This is 94. Um, Disney claimed in its response that it paid Cushing's agent to use his likeness to revive the Tarkin character in Rogue One and that Francis was seeking unjust enrichment when suing... I'm sorry, I didn't didn't mention who Francis is. It must be his agent or... State or something. Or lawyer, maybe. One of the other. Kevin Francis, a producer who worked with the late actor Peter Cushing, is suing. Interesting. He won 650 grand... And that's in court. Now, there's like, you know, whatever Jones signed on a contract with Speecher is probably better than when he got paid for the film in 1977, which yes. is like seven well, grand. Jesus, I mean, you know, they've, <laughs> Disney have yeah. got it forever now, so you can not you can only imagine what the figure might be. If you did a dodgy contract and you just did a flat fee without residuals, you'd be kicking yourself. Oh, yeah. You know who I want to know what they earn? And, and and I also want to know if it's a real voice. You know that TikTok voice, that... These guys are raging. Oh, yeah, but well, that's used a lot. Yeah, I know. Who I'm is so that? Is that because if that's an actual, you know, an actual voice and not sort of synthesized, he's. I hope he made some good money out of selling his I voice sure because so. Jesus, it's just everywhere. Every second video, it's, I doubt it. The first voice of TikTok, you know, we, we did that yeah, story, she right? She sued them yeah. because yeah, they stole standing. her voice, yeah. and um, you know, she won out of court. She settled out of court. Um, but uh, Bev Standing is her name. She's a Canadian mm. actor. And, um, you know, that was sort of a watershed in a lot of ways. Yeah. And I don't know what's come of that. But, um, you know, there's other... Well, she a- got a- something at least. But yeah. I don't, I don't like sometimes when people settle out of court, when people, when companies do dubious illegal things, because it, it just hides it all and makes them seem... I know. Does. But all you do is feed the lawyers too. That's the other problem though. Yeah, well, you know, give them a bucket of money when you could just be going. Well, You'd thanks. Like I'll to take see a company like TikTok get blood dry. <laughs> mm. I, I will say this: uh, my my friends at Nava, you know, Tim Friedlander and Karen mm-hmm. Kilfrey, yep. they're doing the work here in the U.S. They're going to Congress. They're going to um, literally the war room. Like two, three weeks ago, Tim and Karen were in the war room at <laughs> that's where they had the meeting uh, to discuss this stuff. Um, so they're trying to find ways to protect actors' likenesses, mm. and get the, mm. and they are, of course, getting the government involved because that's what we need here is laws to protect people from exploitation by corporations. And so they're trying to do that, and we'll see what comes of it. And it's because they're getting money from NAVA members. You know, the National Association of Voiceover is getting paid dues, and they're using that dues to do stuff like this. I hope it works yeah. out. I hope it really does make change, and I hope that people. Why, why isn't SAG on the forefront of that? What they're too well, that, slow moving, giant. You know, we've got the same thing here. We've got a body called AVA, uh, the Australian Association of Voice Actors. They're doing exactly the same as NAVA or NAVA. Um, so they're meeting with governments. They've had a couple of uh, meetings, and it's been tabled in Parliament as well about all this AI stuff. But that was my question. Why is our union not doing it? Man. What does your union do, though? Think Honestly. about how many people are involved in steering what happens in the union, right? Whereas NAVA, it's really like two or three people taking actual action on the behalf of thousands. Yeah. Um, you know, you scale it up to the union where it's hundreds taking on, you know, the actions of millions. It's just a slow moving bureaucracy I, crap yeah, fest. It is. Yeah. I think it's I think it's straight <clears throat> simple. It's plagiarism. If you quote somebody, you have to give them credit and sucking in a bunch of information that's not yours and turning it into code is theft. I agree. Well, it's it's funny because before we started recording this, you were talking about a friend of yours who ended up on a was it Kanye? You were talking about yeah. a Kanye song? Yeah, his um he um he has one he, particular line in the song Gold Digger. It's the line, get, get up, up get up, up get, 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 get down. Yeah, that guy that says yeah. that line. And so that's, he was recorded in what context? His was, father. His father was in a soul funk band in the 60s and a lot of rappers, like, get up, get down, like, found that sample. They liked it. Kanye put it in Gold Digger. 
and uh, he got sued and he won, you know? So the fellow yeah, beat, the, the, the fellow that. won over yeah. Kanye and got paid by yeah. Kanye. So like Kanye team. took it out and used Arnie instead. Get down. <laughs> get out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it's, it's like, if you talk about that, say so you get a royalty for that, for someone taking your voice, for using it in the song. Someone gets your image and uses it, then you can sue them for using okay. your image without permission. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the whole thing that's going on at the moment with uh, the Trump thing with Foo Fighters and Taylor Swift and all those people, they're all suing him for using their music without permission. But for some peculiar reason, it doesn't seem to be illegal to use or sample my voice or any other voice actor's voice for an AI. It's weird. Because it's never had to be, though. That's the thing. I mean, we, we you know, and we all know the law doesn't keep up. And I'm not defending this at all because mm. I, I totally agree with Robert. I mean, you can't just do this. I, I'm not saying I disagree. But I think the problem is that this is all so new that the law just hasn't had a chance I to keep up and, and, and sort of go, okay, well, we need to, we need to change here. And it's I think, new. you know. Theft you know, is old. It's, the yeah. old, it's like, I don't know, prostitution and theft, like the first two. Yeah, but you know what? It hasn't been as prevalent. I mean, how long since, you know, it's been a good few years that we've talked about this now. Okay, it's probably three or four years. Yeah. But, I mean, in legal sense, that's the blink of an eye, you know? And it's like, it's um, it, it, it needs to keep up. And I think that's where Nava and Ava and, you know, their little the twin sisters, you know, need to... um to sort of get onto government and, 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 and yeah, and protest for change. Absolutely. Um, yeah, it doesn't yeah. need to change. It just needs to, people need to realize it falls under the oldest goddamn law, which is thou shall not steal. Yeah. But it's, that, yeah, that, that, that's, that's, that's right. the problem at the moment. It's, it's not stealing. That's the thing. Yes, it is. Yeah. It it's is still stealing, stealing. And I, I don't like, know why they no, just, the law doesn't, doesn't see it as yeah. stealing. That's the thing. The law doesn't specifically say the you can't do this. You've got to. Pre- you've still got to go to court and prove your case. That's the problem. The, the law and doesn't specifically Bev say you can't do this, and that's the issue. Okay, and that's why Bev should not have settled out of court with TikTok. No. Well, true. Yeah, but you know, you can't put it all on her either. I mean, Jesus, can you imagine the stress and everything else that she must have gone through to get to that resolution? You know, it's like if, if she yeah. didn't, then there would have been an official conviction on the books and a precedent. I agree. I agree, but I yeah, you know, totally I can see where Bev went. Fuck that. I, they're throwing a good yeah. amount of money at me. I'll take that. That's, That's all I was scary. after in the first place. Thank you very much. I, you know, I get that. Yeah, it's pretty scary. Yeah, I, I get it as well. But uh, it would be nice to actually set a president yeah. in court. I think the president could be set in the fact they settled out of court. So I, I gather Basically you could probably still guilt, use that. You well, know, he said, we're not admitting guilt. We're just paying her off for all the bullshit we did. Yeah, it's like, well, isn't that admitting guilt if you're paying her off? Because if you didn't do anything wrong, why are you giving her money? Right. Well, just to wrap it completely in a circle, going back to James Earl Jones, did you know that the rumor is, is that when you hear on CNN, the voice of James Earl Jones saying, this is CNN, CNN. that that was stolen? Really? Really? Yes. Not that they stole his voice. That it was one of those things, you know, when a celebrity goes to a radio show and they're like, can you do a liner for us? Uh, that's what uh, it was. Yeah, and and guess what? Yeah. He became, this is CNN on the, on CNN. And that voice was used over and over. And eventually one of his people was like, uh, yo, what the hell? Pay us. Pay yeah. us up, mm-hmm. motherfucker. Uh, hang on. So, <laughs> you know, like, can we yeah, take a step yeah, back? Yeah. So was, are we saying that because he agreed to record that line for CNN that that's stolen. Is that what you're saying? Well, that's this is a gray area <laughs> because I'm just thinking. I put so, I put artist IDs in promos and stuff every day. G'day, this is Bruce Springsteen. You know, John right. Mellencamp. Blah blah. I blah. think it, I think it falls a bit differently in the you know because I was thinking the same thing. But when you use like you know this hi this yeah is, okay yeah you, they, they, it's a misrepresentation I guess yeah more than anything yeah else. well this is actually like an ID this is like a full yeah you know, yeah like yeah branding, and that's fair enough, basically too. yeah. Ten years of growth. This is CNN. That line. <laughs> it, right sounds, there. it sounds yeah. cool, though, I have to say. It sounds good. <laughs> it sounds yeah. Yeah. You're probably it's right. It's cool. very wrong, but it sounds very cool. <laughs> so it's a shame they haven't got a, a presenter called Luke because you could have him going, <laughs> Luke. <laughs> Luke, who should they listen to? Who should they be watching? <laughs> Luke, who do we trust for news? <laughs> <laughs> I was I was gonna say to you guys I re- I recorded him because he was also the voice of Verizon, and 
I was, I don't know, 20 something, one of my first ISDN sessions, sweating balls because I'm going to have James Earl Jones, you know, on the mic. And he was two, two, two things. First of all, he was the nicest person ever. Like, you know, what's your name? Oh, hello, Robert. Right, right. Like, Not the persona and, that he had. Like, he came on Letterman, you know, and they did this thing, top 10 things that sound cool when James Earl Jones says it. And he stands there extremely stone-faced and stoic. He just was like, in this character, you know? That's not who he is. Yeah. Super nice guy. No, he's very Super nice. Super aff affable. Like, and, yeah. I don't know if you know this, but he, like, he wants his scripts ahead of time. He had a, he's, you know, he had a stutter. Does his homework. Well, yeah, he, he got an award good. from, you know, Sovas, Voice Arts Awards. And, you know, of course they wanted to get a great name on stage, but, you know, for a reason. The guy's a legit voice actor who really does his work. He's not, he's not yeah. a celebrity who shows up, does their own voice as a character, like a donkey, and then goes on, goes on and says, well, I don't get the big freaking deal. I just do the, the yeah. voice. Why is voiceover so hard? Mm. I'm not going to say whose name this is, but it's a stand-up comedian. Mm. Uh, but that was a lot of BS uh, you know, when he okay. said that. He, he does have such an amazing voice, though, because I swear to God, he can punch you through the speakers. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. like Don, yeah. kind of like Don did, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, he, this was in 1991. He did the voice of the CNN for for an appearance. It was, and then he came on the show Personalities. This is, this is in an article on a website called CBR.com. You can look it up. And however, Jones then started telling people he never agreed to do those liners. He appeared on the TV series Personalities where he claimed, I think it may have been a freebie. I may have just been doing an interview like this. And the CNN interviewer said, oh, Mr. Jones, would you please read this? This is CNN, and that's how it happened. Yeah. Um, so that's a, a little sneaky thing. And you, you can almost say it was ignorant because it was 1990. I don't know. Someone had some know. foresight, though, didn't they? Jesus. Yeah. But ja I mean, James L. Jones, Morgan Freeman, some of those guys, I mean, they could say anything and you'd just melt in your chair, really, wouldn't you? Yeah. Let's be honest. Yeah. I have not heard a very convincing yeah. sound alike of James Earl Jones. I've heard a lot of good sound alikes of, of Morgan, Morgan Freeman, Freeman and yeah. I know a guy that does. Who's the guy who does Tony the Tiger now? Uh, Earl. Well, or the no, original was Earl, Earl right? Ravenscroft. Earl, yeah. Yeah. Earl Ravenscroft. But the guy who does Tony the Tiger. Oh, it's um, no, somebody I know. Wait, it's, um, who is it? Who do I know? Here's something, to, I guess, to throw around and something to think about. If uh, these AI laws went through... I wonder what that means for impersonations. So if you did a, if you, I mean, I know there's, you know, you can't just do Morgan Freeman now, but I wonder what it means for even sound alikes or close tos or whatever that we seem to get away with at the moment. I wonder what that means. That That's could a be good interesting question because I'm sure the lawyers for the AI companies are going to say it's not really them, it's an impersonation. Mm. But I did a session with, um, George, your client, um, David K, right? Yeah. And he's freaking amazing. Yeah. He's doing um who's the nature documentary uh guy? David Attenborough. David Attenborough. He's, he's doing he's an Attenborough every, thing. Yeah, he he does an app and Attenborough's like, you know. Oh, he's so would good you say at it's it his voice so match or would you say he's doing an impression? He's doing an impression, yeah. but it's, but it's very so close. Good. And it's so funny when he goes into yeah, it. Because he goes, every time he starts a take, he goes, I'm 93. <laughs> well, there's, there, there's a, a, a sporting bet company here, um, and you can, you'd can you have to fact check me on this because I'm not sure 100% of the details, but I do know that these ads exist. And there's an, a radio announcer um, called Mick Malloy, and he's famous for, you know, sort of being a really funny guy. And the story goes that they approached him to do, the, to do ads for sports bet. Right. And he said no. So they've what they've done is they've found someone who can do a Mick Malloy. And so now all of a sudden Mick Malloy has been on sports bet for the last two years or something. I know. I know. When I first heard now, that, now, I thought, how, now, now hang on. Mick? So but hey, if we're gonna go down the AI yeah. road, what's the difference here? To me that falls under the same category. It's theft, because right? I, when it's I first be. heard that I thought, why why would you not actually Say, give them a decision. Do, well, I deceased, don't. Uh, again, I don't deceased. think he can. You know, I, I don't. When we do, um, I've done some TV, some radio commercials, and the star of the radio commercial has a little legal thing that says "celebrity voices impersonated." Right. Which is the other thing about, like, you know, AI. Should it be like in Europe, everything that's a GMO is listed? 
And there's those who think that anything that comes out of AI should be mm-hmm. listed as such. But in America, yeah. you don't know what the fuck your food is synthesized or <clears throat> real. Well, or, if we're going to get on the know, disinformation yeah. bandwagon, then yeah, anything like that should be um, under the microscope, shouldn't it? Let's be honest. I agree. Yeah, California, get the we're, we're the masters yeah. of disclosing chemicals because you drive into any gas station in California and there's a sign on the gas pump saying there are chemicals known here by the state of California to cause cancer. It's on every single gas pump in California. So we are the kings well, of that. We voted that in. And it's one of those things, it's noise. You don't, nobody cares anymore. It's just noise. No. It always makes me oh, laugh yeah. when you see like glue packets and stuff like that it says, you know, caution, deliberately enhancing and inhaling the contents may be harmful or fatal. And it's like, wow, there's you a mean revelation. Those are user, inst- <laughs> user instructions on how to get fucked up. And yeah. Exactly. Yeah. In other words, hey, go away and try this. Yeah. How about in, in, in yeah. other pictures of a baby on plastic bags? saying don't put your baby in the bag to play no but they probably time. will be soon <laughs> given this government's tendencies it's, yeah. Yeah. it's like yeah we have we have plastic bags that are made in the billions in china that each have an image printed on it really saying, do not let your that's baby play with the funny that's funny bag. Yeah. there's another thing where those little flat button cell batteries are 2032s they're the ones yeah, that are in yeah. so many things yeah. now they have new ones that taste bad oh really to stop kids putting yeah. them in their mouths. There's actually wow. a chemical and it's printed on the thing and it says there's like a baby's face with a frown. Mm. Like, they're going to do that with nine If they put it in their too. mouth, it tastes bad so they'll spit it out. It's actually quite scary. I mean, are they, they going to do that with nine volt batteries? <laughs> well, nine volt batteries, it, it's, it's an actual chemical reaction from the electricity on your tongue. Yeah, when you put it on your but tongue. These, yeah, batteries, right. yeah. these batteries don't really have, they're only three volts. You yeah. don't really get Who's much guilty of, of that though? When you're sort of, you know, when, you, when, you, when you're testing OB gear or something, you go... Oh, yeah, the battery's okay. I've done it a thousand times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. I used to do that with yeah, yeah. kids. Absolutely. Like, like, 9-volt battery. Yeah. <laughs> Stick your tongue on that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do, you know, do you know what Rebecca was talking about? Like, apparently in, like, uh, um, in Australia, in New Zealand, they have these, like, electric fences, have right? Me too. Yeah. To, yep. For farms. Yep. Don't okay. use your tongue. And the way, no, don't, don't no. piss on them either, let you're, me you're tell a you. Kid. <laughs> well, don't piss on them either, right. But apparently kids would do this game because like the, the electric fence is electrified in a pulse. Mm-hmm. It doesn't stay electrified the whole time. So the thing is wait for it to hit, then grab it and hold on for it as long as you can and then let go before it hits again. Mm-hmm. And of course, you end up holding on to it too long. And she said like she described how it is to have the electricity build up and it warms you up inside it's like warm. i was like holy cow <laughs> <laughs> yeah. good on you rebecca there's, a, uh, a, there's a show here in australia uh it's about working dogs and it's it's a competition where australia's best working dog trainers um have have their get puppies and they raise them and they have competition to see who can raise the best working dog. Anyway, long story short, there was, I'm pretty sure it was in this or it might've been something else, but there's this, this scene in something that I saw, the, one of these puppies went up to the electric fence and goes to, t- and takes a bite of the fence. And just before it bites down, you hear this crack, like an electric jump, electric voltage. Jump, and this poor puppy goes off screaming down the paddock. Yep, 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 <laughs> running away from the fence. It's very funny. Yeah, yeah, Aussie yeah, cattle yeah. dogs are yeah. super popular here. My friend's got a mix. Everybody loves an Aussie cattle dog mix. Blue cattle dogs here. or Kelpies. Yes. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Bluey's, a, yeah, Bluey's yeah. The, the hero there. But there's also. I wonder if that's because of Bluey, which is now the number one show in the it's entire world. Massive, 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 massive. Dan and Period. Joe, congratulations since we're on that Full subject. Stop. Well something in the $2 billion valuation or something like that. You probably used to see a mate of mine with his, uh, his Kelpie. Wow. Down on, I uh, used to go take it for a walk down at Malibu. Oh, really? Yeah, they're so popular. Yeah. Down the Kelpies beach. Kelpie's yeah, has a yeah. mix. He'd always get told off because it's always off lead. Yeah, he loves it. Yeah. Well, Kelpie's a great yeah. dog. Good luck with editing that one. <laughs> ah, there's just a huge chunk in the middle that's coming out. <laughs> it's going to yeah, be a exactly. donut. Yeah, Leave donut. some silence in the middle. We'll just put a censorship bleep in the middle. There you go. That would be very appropriate. Well, that was fun. Is it over? The Pro Audio Suite, with thanks to Tribooth, and Austrian Audio, recorded using Source Connect, edited by Andrew Peters, and mixed by Voodoo Radio Imaging, with tech support from George the Tech Whittem. Don't forget to subscribe to the show, and join in the conversation on our Facebook group. To leave a comment, suggest a topic, or just say day. drop us a note at our website, theproaudiosuite.com.